Hi there, it's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog and it's the Spring Garden Tips and Tour. And we're going to talk about cutting down on weeding by planting plants that outcompete the weeds. But first let me show you what the garden's looking like now and what's doing well. The Middle Sized Garden is a walled town garden in South East England and it's 100 feet long and 80 feet wide at its widest but it's L-shaped so it's 40 feet wide nearer the house. And we usually have mild summers and mild winters. The averages are mid-20 Celsius, mid-60s Fahrenheit for summer. And in winter, we very rarely go below minus 6 Celsius, 21 Fahrenheit. But we've had quite a tough summer last summer, with temperatures hitting 40 Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit, and a drought. And also quite a tough winter. It's been reasonably mild for most of the time and very wet, but there have been one or two bouts where we had really cold weather, down to minus 15 Celsius, which is cold for our part of the world. And some of our plants have really suffered. Outside the back door, I've got two formium in pots, and you can see by the brown marks that they've been hit hard by the frost because they're sort of borderline tender for our part of the world. I'm not going to do anything to them immediately. When plants are damaged, either by unexpected cold weather or unexpected hot weather, then it's often best to let them recover on their own because anything you do to cut away at a plant stimulates growth. And if you stimulate growth, you're putting it under pressure. So if it's already under pressure, we need to not pressurise it more. So I'll put up with the brown marks on my formium leaves until it comes to the time when I would divide them anyway. And by then I hope there'll be some fresh green growth and we'll be able to pick out the brown leaves. Coming out of the back door, we go up some steps and into an area we call the parterre. And in the winter, this has got Panicum, Vergatum, Shenandoah in four pots. And of course, now in spring, I've just cut them down. These grasses, along with the sundial, the benches, the statue, and of course the topiary trees, carry the garden throughout the winter. But now we are getting some flowers, and the daffodils are out, and the fruit tree blossom is out. So we don't need the grasses any longer. We've cut them away, and now the fresh growth will come through in the next month. At the back of the garden, probably one of the best flowers is the Euphorbia wolfenii. It's one of the earliest to come out and it goes on flowering in those citrus green flowers for months at a time. It's also quite well behaved. That clump has been there for about 20 years and I will have to thin it out once the flowering has stopped later on in the year. It's self-seeded a bit and this clump down by the bench is about three years old. But on the whole, it's pretty well behaved and it offers really good long-term flowering value. However, well-behaved isn't the word I would use to describe for this clump. This is Smyrnium petholiatum, and this clump plus another clump in the garden all comes from three plants I bought about 18 years ago. I should have weeded them out more vigorously and now the Smyrnium has invaded the lawn. Now, of course, part of that is because we did no mow May last year. We didn't actually mow our lawn until about the end of June. And what that meant is that the seeds of the Smyrnium, which come up around the end of the June, were able to self-sow into the lawn. So I am going to do no mow May again this year, but what I think we'll do is to keep a path mown between the borders and the main part of the lawn, really to stop self-seeders like Smyrnium getting into the lawn. And of course the Smyrnium's green, so you might say, well, why not have the Smyrnium in the lawn? But it goes completely dormant after it's seeded. So from about July onwards, you've just got bare patches. However, there is one good thing about this Smyrnium, apart from its lovely citrusy green flowers that everybody always admires so much when they come out. And that is that spreading over the border like this is that it's completely suppressing the weeds. Instead of weeding an entire border, all I need to do is to take out and thin the Smyrnium plants just to bring them under control a bit. So it's not no effort, but it is reasonably low effort. And in the main border, this has been achieved by the alliums. We cleared an awful lot of plants from the main border last autumn, and we could have had a lot of bare soil. Bare soil attracts weeds. However, we did leave in all the bulbs, and as you can see, the alliums have just spread everywhere, and their leaves are pretty much covering the soil. I'm going to have to thin these out, because when I come to plant up this border, there's really no space for plants, so I'm going to have to be taking clumps of alliums out. But once again, it's a very 
attractive holding pattern and it's actually saving me a lot of weeding. Which takes me on to the third part of the garden where I'm using plants to outcompete weeds. This patch used to have a great clump of ground elder and we got rid of the ground elder by covering it with horticultural plastics heating, black, so that the light couldn't get at it. And it was there for two summers. And we weeded round the edge of the horticultural plastic because otherwise um, the weed just creeps out. And pretty much got rid of the ground elder. You never totally get rid of ground elder because those roots go right deep into the earth and it's virtually impossible, even by using light blocking fabrics, to get rid of them completely. So I replanted this with a couple of comfrey plants given to me by a friend. If you read about comfrey, you'll see it says it's invasive. It's a native to the UK and Northern Europe, so it isn't the kind of invasive that could cause damage to the countryside. It's important to know when people say that a plant's invasive, it's actually important to know what it's going to invade. And if you have a plant that invades your open countryside, your coastal areas, your moorland, your mountains, and that sort of thing. It can cause a huge amount of damage, it can outcompete the native plants, and it takes away the food sources and the shelter that your native flora and fauna depend on. So for example, burning bush is native to the UK. We can grow it without it escaping into our countryside and causing damage. However, in parts of the United States, it really has caused a huge problem. So it's important to remember that when you see a plant's invasive, it may not be invasive where you are, or it may be invasive where you are, and it's just really worth checking what is dangerously invasive where you are. Comfrey will be called invasive in gardens, but it's not, as I said, invasive to the countryside as a whole. So I've planted the comfrey and it's spread. It's spread pretty vigorously, but it certainly stopped the ground elder from growing. And I'd rather have the comfrey than the ground elder. Firstly, its flowers come out very early in spring, so it's extremely useful for pollinators who emerge early. Secondly, it's much easier to pull up than the ground elder is. The ground elder roots just get deeply tangled in the soil. And thirdly, I can put the comfrey onto the compost heap, or I can use it to make a fertiliser tea, and I'll put a video about that in the description below. So it's a very useful plant on lots of levels. I am going to have to keep it under control. So I think this is just a question of working out your own balance. There's no part of your house or garden that doesn't need some maintenance, so there's no no work plant. But if you'd rather pull out comfrey from time to time than keep weeding ground elder, then comfrey is the one for you. But if, on the other hand, you are really concerned that it might invade parts of your border and that you won't want to pull it out, then maybe it's not for you. But then you'll be pulling out weeds. <laughs> so, it, as I said, it's a really personal choice, I think. I've decided to go for the comfrey rather than the ground elder. This week is when I'm launching Behind the Scenes at the Middle Sized Garden, which is a YouTube channel membership scheme. And it's important to say that it doesn't affect the regular videos which will be uploaded as usual. Behind the scenes is something a bit different and a bit extra and I'll be able to upload some of the footage I can't use in the main videos, I'll be able to upload footage perhaps before it's used in the main videos, add in extra tips and also it's just a chance to talk to people more easily because you get badges that go against your name in comments so I can quickly spot members. I do actually try to reply to all the comments on the Middle Size Garden and I certainly read them all, they're hugely valuable to me. But as I said, the middle sized garden behind the scenes is separate and different and the normal videos will go on being uploaded as usual. If you'd like more spring tips, there's a spring tips playlist at the end of this video. And thank you for watching. Goodbye!